Hi, in this tutorial we're going to follow on from the previous one and learn how to blend clip files together in CatRig. First thing we should do is we should set our default tangents back to auto. We set them to linear when we were doing mocap cleaning and we set them back to auto so all our animation looks uh, a little smoother and more realistic. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into my clip manager and load in the clips. Click open, go to my project folder in scenes, and I'll load in the cartwheel that we cleaned up earlier. Load that. And there's a little funny thing that happens, certainly in this version of Max, a little bug. Uh, if I put that into animate mode now by clicking this button, it looks like the animation data has all gone wrong. But I'll just give the timeline a little wiggle. And, uh, and everything gets better again. So just be aware of that. So I'm going to load in the next one now. And uh, another one that I cleaned up earlier. This is called Fly Spin Kick. I'm going to open that in the same way. Just give it a little wiggle to get rid of that um, strange thing that happens. <coughs> now, at the moment, now I've got two in here, but you can't see the cartwheel because it's behind. Uh, the fly spin kick layer. If I want to see the cartwheel, I just double click on the fly spin kick layer to ignore it. I can also press the ignore button here, and then I can see the cartwheel. Now, what I need to do is I need to decide when the transition is going to happen. So I need to find bits between each clip which is in common between them. Let's just go into perspective view. So the, we're going to do a cartwheel first. We're going to do the cartwheel, then comes in and lands on the yellow foot, lands on the blue foot, and really, as he finishes the cartwheel, he's on both feet. So that's the kind of thing we need to look for. Sometimes it will be landing on one foot, and you'll need to make sure that it transitions while one foot is on the ground. Other times you might want to transition in the air, but in this case, both feet are on the ground. So at the point where the blue foot lands on the ground, which is there, really. So 57 is about the earliest frame where I can have the transition happening. Just looking at my fly spin kick there, you can see that with a fly spin kick, he starts with both feet on the ground. And there's a little hop in there, which might, might well help us with our transition as well. So he's got about... 15 frames where the feet are on the ground. So we can have a transition that's up to 15 frames long, really, and those feet will stay relatively uh, good to each other. So in order to get the timing right, <coughs> let's just wind forward to our cartwheel again, frame 57, when both feet are on the ground. Turn the fly spoon kick back on. I can press this button up here to bring up the dope sheet, but it brings up a particular part of the dope sheet where you can see the the ranges of each of the actions that we've got. Now it's actually gone off the edge a little bit, so let's just fix that with the zoom. So we can see both of them a bit more clearly now. But what I'm going to do, you can see I've left my marker here, my time marker, at frame 57, so I can very easily just pick up the fly spin kick and move it on the dope sheet until I get to frame 57. And then I've got a transition here. And I said I had up to 15 frames of transition, so let's just see uh, how much I have got there. Plenty. In fact, way more than 15 that can happen at that point. So I've now aligned them up in time. Um, I now have to align them up in space as well so that they happen in the same position. All right, so I'm just going to change my um, timeline range to finish at, I think it's about frame 143 that it happened on the dope sheet just then. And now I should be able to um, see both of them. So I should be able to see the whole of the fly spin kick. So in order to see the cartwheel while the fly spin kick is active, I can use this little button here. I click on the cartwheel layer, and then go onto this button to display the layer transform gizmo, and I get a ghost of my cartwheel animation. So I can see the cartwheel happening and then you can see as my 
foot lands on the ground here and both feet are landed on the ground you can see that the fly spin kick starts and the transition is going to happen in that space there between one starting and the other finishing and what will happen is that the character will form a kind of transitionary position between each of those poses as we go through the transition so it will start in the cartwheel position there as it goes through the transition it will change into the fly spin kick trans uh, position there so we need to line them up a little bit better than what we've got at the moment so I'm going to bring my fly spin kick um, gizmo up as well now you can see it's it's put a ghost around on top of this one the important thing though is this gizmo we used this when we were doing our cleanup as well to, to get the data on the ground plane what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this gizmo and you'll see it moves the entire animation of one layer to a particular position and I'm going to move it so that the blue foot the left foot there is lined up with the left foot of the original transition and as I, as I go through now you can hopefully see that the transition uh, is fairly logical that foot stays nice and stable I could go even further than that and what I can do is I can rotate the fly spin kick around so that both feet line up pretty closely still keeping the emphasis on one foot because he'd have to have the weight on one foot and he's got his weight on the blue foot if I spin it around like that you can see that the uh, yellow foot is now in a very similar position so as he went through the transition he would land there he would go through the transition you've got a little jump where the foot would come off the ground and the blue foot would stay pretty much where it is and the yellow foot would move back to the fly spin kick position ready for that motion however the problem with that transition if I look at it from the top spin it around here so you can see that the cartwheel is heading in a kind of horizontal position across the screen the cartwheel is heading off in that direction and then he goes off and kicks back in this direction so we've lined the clips up so that the feet work but obviously the clip itself doesn't work there's no real reason for him to cartwheel in this way and kick off that way in fact what I probably want to do is I want to make him kick off in the same direction he was cartwheeling as if he's cartwheeling towards someone so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rotate this gizmo round so that the motion from the fly spin kick keeps going in the same horizontal direction back to my perspective view now that gives us a problem because as our character lands on the yellow foot and then the blue foot you can see that the feet are the wrong way round this is the yellow foot on the ghost and this is the blue foot on the other character so that would be a little bit unfeasible so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it round so the blue foot lines up again on the heel because that's where he would probably be putting the weight We go back to my top view again to cartwheel in and then kick off in the same direction so we've got the right direction but in terms of the transition now we have this problem where he lands on the yellow foot then the blue foot and then he's got to turn around to get ready for the right position so during that transition now the blue foot is going to stay in pretty much the same position but the yellow foot and the body are going to swing are going to swing right round to the new position so let's put that tra transition in and see what happens in order let's turn the layer transform gizmos off first in order to make the transition happen I need to get to the start point of my transition which was frame 57 
and I need to make sure that up until that point my fly spin kick layer is not visible it's see-through so you can see the cartwheel up to this point so to do that you'll see there's a thing called global weight here which I can change down to zero I'm just going to put auto key on change that down to zero I'm going to keep it at zero all the way to frame 57 it's automatically put in a keyframe of 100 there so I keep it at zero for that length which means now I can see through the spin kick layer and I can only see the cartwheel and you can see that the fly spin kick layer has got a value of 0% there then as we go through the transition which we said was going to be about 15 frames so let's go for 72 that's exactly 15 frames and turn the global weight up to 100% now we have a transition where this value is animated from 0 up to 100% over those 15 frames which means that this animation layer is going to become more and more influential over the final animation and what we can see now is we can see that there's a transition from the cartwheel position through to the fly spin kick position and then the fly spin kick takes over completely now that's how we make the transition happen it may sometimes need a little bit of tweaking where the start and finish points are, but that one's, I know the leg goes a bit funny, we'll fix that in a minute, but that one's worked out all right. So let's just have a quick playthrough in real time. And that's what it would look like. So we're going to fix the uh, odd movement of the legs by using layers. You might not be surprised to know that. And that will be the subject of the next tutorial.